Hi friends, this is Caitlin and today I'm excited to share with you my first time making a die cut wreath. So I grabbed these really pretty dies from Simon Says Stamp. They're the Arch Leaf and Flower Blooms dies and we're going to be making a really fun layered floral wreath with them today on this card. Super 3D, super fun. Um, I'm placing all of my little dies that come in this set on my Twiddler's Nook die holder which is a coffee cup a magnetic coffee cup and if you don't have one of them i absolutely highly recommend it i will leave a link down in the description box below for you um, my stamps today are going to be also from simon says stamp it's the garden greetings and we're going to be using some distress inks to make my own kind of colorful paper that I'm going to be die cutting all of my floral and leaf pieces out of. So I'm starting out now with scattered straw and I'm using the Simon Says Stamp um, blending brushes. This is in no way sponsored. I would absolutely love it to be, you know, one day, but um, right now all of these items were purchased with my own money. Uh, I am just telling you that I love them because I love them. So um, I am a big fan of these brushes. I'm layering on Scattered Straw, Wild Honey, and Rusty Hinge. And then I'm also going to go back in and splatter them in a little bit. And then for my greenery, I'm going to be using the Peel Paint, Forest Moss, and Shabby Shutters. And just kind of creating um, a very speckly layered look. Um, these in person definitely looked a lot more blended. I wanted them to have a lot of different texture and color tones in them. I wasn't going for very blended, but on camera they look a lot splotchier than they do in real life. Um, but again, it, for what I was using, I was not looking for a perfect blend. So I splattered on some clean, clear water and then sopped that up with a paper towel to get those lighter spots and then went in with my darker two inks and watered them down and splattered them on and I repeated the same exact process with my yellow and orange pieces. Um, I definitely wanted a lighter and a darker side for my oranges and yellows because I wanted my smaller middle pieces of my flower to be lighter than the bottom layers. Um, so that's why there's, there's absolutely no blending between those two. I really wanted there to be um, two different shades for me to cut from. I'm lining up my dies uh, so that they fit inside the areas that I had ink blended. And I end up running my florals through four separate times um, so that I have enough for four, four flowers. Um, and then I use the leafy pieces to line up my stamp. So I grabbed that thank you stamp from the Garden Greeting stamp set. And the paper that I'm using has like a woven texture to it. So when I stamped it in my Misty, it kind of kept that little bit of a checkerboard pattern, but I actually really love how that texture looks um, with the floral around it, kind of a burlapy feel. Um, so I was happy with it, I left it. If you don't love that kind of texture and you have paper like this, you could definitely stamp it either onto the back, which didn't have texture, um, and then cut it out and place it on there or do it onto like white and just fussy cut it, whatever works for you. But I thought that the extra texture was really fun. So I adhered my smaller cream colored panel down to a normal A2 sized piece of craft um, so that there would be a little bit of a border around. And then I had die cut my leafy arched leaves, I guess, out of white cardstock. And I'm just layering them up right now to give a little bit of dimension. I knew that the flowers were gonna be super 3D with all of the layers that go into them just the way they are. And I didn't want the leaves to kind of get lost. So I thought that stacking them up just a little bit with that white cardstock would really help them to kind of um, hold their own on the card. So I'm just taking a little bit of liquid glue and lining those up. You could also do this out of like a green card stock, but I just didn't think about it. When it's the card's done, you can't really see the white at all anyway. So um, now I'm adding my liquid glue to the back of those pieces and I'm just gonna place them around uh, my sentiment. I did not want this to be in a perfect circle. Uh, and I wanted there to be some overlapping off of that card panel. And I think when everything's done, there's even a little bit of overlapping from one of my flowers off of the card. I don't mind that at all. I think that if it's a perfect circle, it's pretty, but I just thought that it would be more interesting if it 
was circular, but not completely perfect or connected. And now is the fun part. This was so much fun to do. I absolutely love this process. So I'm taking the tiniest little bit of liquid glue and adding it to one of my larger dark orange pieces and then taking another one of those pieces and just layering it the other way. And I have some reverse tweezers and you'll see as we start using smaller pieces, I'll grab those to kind of help hold everything for a couple seconds just so that everything has time to dry. And now I'm going in and kind of creating an X shape over the base that we've created with the smaller yellow pieces. And there you can see I'm starting to use those reverse tweezers. These ones are from Pink and Main and I just love them because the colors are so fun. Um, I will have all of the items that I used as well as all of the colors and everything like that listed in that description box below for you. Some of those links are affiliate links, uh, which just means that you help support my channel. Um, it doesn't cost you anything to use them, but if you're interested in any of the products I use today, definitely go down there and check it out. Also, while you have a second, if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, I would super appreciate it. Our crafty community is growing all the time over here and I'm so thankful for you. Um, I also have been playing a lot more on TikTok. I have a Facebook page, I have an Instagram page. I'm gonna make sure all those links are down in the description box below for you too because there's a ton of different places that you can find me if you're looking for more crafty inspiration and I would love to see you elsewhere. So now that my flowers are done, it's time to go in and add some bling. So I put a dot of liquid adhesive on the center of each flower, and now I'm going in with these tiny iridescent bubbles from Studio Katya that have this really beautiful golden kind of glow to them. And I'm adding one to the center of each flower. And then it was time to place my flowers onto my actual wreath. So I knew I didn't want them to be super symmetrical but I did want them to kind of mirror each other a little bit. So there's one flower covering the end of each arched leaf and one kind of tucked into the, where the end of the other end of the leaf is, where that little trio of leaves kind of pops out of the top. And so I'm just adding a little bit of liquid glue to the back of each leaf. And I went in with the metal side of my Studio Katia embellishment wand to help reach underneath and kind of hold those orange, darker orange areas down while the glue dried. Then I went back and grabbed three uh, more of those tiny bubbles to put in each corner. I just thought this would kind of help tie everything in and when you place them over the green leaves, it kind of looks like little dew drops, which I think is super adorable too. And once again, I'm back on my kick of trying to make my card base at the time that I make my card front so that I am more likely to actually send out my card. So I'm making a side folding white A2 size card base and I'm going to go in with some of the other stamps from that garden greeting stamp set and I'm going to be stamping them in the same distress inks uh, that I used for my ink blending which will end up a little bit splotchy but I again absolutely love that look for this kind of card I think it gives it kind of that shabby chic feel I don't know if anybody else ever remembers watching that I grew up watching that show I loved that style um, I think you can definitely still make out the design very clearly I probably wouldn't use this as my main focus piece on the front of my card I would switch up the ink but I think that the designs in the stamp set are beautiful and I love how simple and clean the little sentiment is just in black tucked in there uh, just I think it ties everything together so the front says thank you the inside says so very much and I think it's just a super sweet and simple way to finish off the card I also grabbed a couple Copic markers that were the same shades as my yellow and orange from the front. Again, just to tie everything together and I just added a tiny bit to the inside of those little flowers and to the middle sections. Then I added my tape runner and because I did not want to trim off any of, you know, all my hard work here, I placed my card base into the corner of my misty and then use that to line up my card front so that I knew everything would be very straight and I wouldn't have to go back in and trim anything down. 
you're feeling super inspired by this card, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for me. I am so grateful that you came to hang out with me today. I hope that you play with some dyes and get a little messy with some splatter this week. I hope that you have an amazing week and weekend. And as always, happy crafting. Mm -hmm.